It was believed that a German astronomer, Simon Marius, was the first to observe Jupiter's moons, but it was Galileo Galilei, an Italian scientist who published his findings in January 1610 and brought the moons to the attention of the scientific community. He looked through his telescope and found three small stars in a straight line near Jupiter. A week later, he concluded that each one was a large satellite orbiting the planet. Today, we call these the Galilean moons. Jupiter has 67 known moons, only 53 of the moons have been given names, and several have yet to have their orbit confirmed. Jupiter's four largest moons were the first moons to be discovered orbiting a planet other than the Earth. Io has an iron core and a brown silicate layer giving the moon a splotchy orange, yellow, black, and red appearance. It is about the same size of our moon and is also tidally locked, meaning the same side always faces Jupiter. It has over 400 active volcanoes, making it the most geologically active object in our solar system. There are lava lakes, floodplains of liquid rock, and plumes of sulfur that spew upward as high as 300 kilometers. Volcanic activity is a result of Io being stretched and squeezed because of the strong gravitational pull from Jupiter on one side and the lesser pull of Europa on the other. Europa is one of the brightest moons in the solar system because of its icy surface and could have an ocean beneath it. Water plumes were seen jetting from the moon in 2013. There are no deep valleys, high mountains, and the moon has very few craters. The surface is covered with cracks, and many scientists believe that it's the result of tidal forces coming from the ocean underneath. As Europa revolves around Jupiter, the planet bends and flexes the moon. This tidal flexing generates heat and keeps the water from freezing completely. This heat, accompanied by active volcanoes, could provide vents that support microbial life like here on Earth. NASA is currently planning a mission to Europa to send a space probe on a flyby mission closer to the moon's surface to take high-resolution pictures. This could open the possibility of sending a space probe to the moon to explore its oceans underneath. Ganymede is the largest moon in the solar system. It's even larger than Mercury and it's three-quarters the size of Mars. Its dark regions are very old and heavily cratered, while the lighter regions are younger and have more grooves and ridges. It's also the only moon in the solar system that has a magnetosphere, which are usually found on planets. Its solid iron core generates this magnetic field and a rocky mantle made up of silicate materials and iron surrounds it. A shell of ice wraps around the mantle and the core and a subsurface saltwater ocean is nest laid between the two layers of ice. Callisto is the fourth and farthest Galilean moon and is the most heavily cratered moon in our solar system. It is about the size of Mercury, but very low in density, and because it's further away, it experiences the least impact from Jupiter's magnetic field. The moon is rockier towards its center and icier towards its crust. There is a multi-ring impact basin called the Valhalla Basin, and it stretches across for more than 1,800 kilometers and was created during a giant impact 2 to 4 billion years ago. It has a thin atmosphere, mostly made of carbon dioxide. An upcoming mission, developed by the European Space Agency, will be studying Jupiter and three of its icy moons, Ganymede, Callisto, and Europa. The spacecraft is targeted to launch in 2022, and by 2033, it would enter Ganymede's orbit, making it the first spacecraft to orbit the moon. Thanks for watching and keep looking up.